228 on this great afternoon, July 11th, 2024, CPI Day. Just going to talk really quick about some of the names I'm trading, the markets. A very interesting session, to say the least, and go from there. The SPY, almost down a percent. It's down about 0.85%, reversed the morning gap, and then it was melting into the afternoon. It's tough to say we found a floor of 556 or so on the SPY here. Uh, seems to be a bottom for now. It just... The, the silver lining, or at least some of the things that would lead me to believe maybe just as a little, I wouldn't call it rotation, but like rebalancing and and, and folks trying to reposition a little bit. Uh, the VIX is only up a 2.8%. Typically when you have, especially with markets at all-time highs, when you would have a pull like this and you think the VIX is near historical lows, it would have a larger larger bounce. So, uh, I, you know, it's my famous last words. Typically, when I say that, tomorrow the VIX will be up 20% and we'll have a, a big, big pullback. But uh, for now, the SP is up about three tenths of a percent for the week. Tomorrow we get PPI data. So hopefully that supports uh, what the P CPI gave today and then uh, earnings season. So we start with the banks. Should be interesting. I was watching that this 561 on the SPY for possible support. That that fell through. So then you start looking at some of the areas from, from uh, this week so far, five. 554.19 was Monday's low. I might hate to, to see us erase that, but just some some spots you just hope to see hold. Otherwise, I'll be looking for some possible hedge puts. But you know, for now, just a standard pat. The chip names, I mean, just getting smoked. I mean, look at uh, Broadcom is down. Well, it was down over 4%. It's bounced. Uh, Land Research, uh, NVIDIA, AMD, and all these names. Um, I don't know if it... So you take a look what's happening with the market right now. All the... Uh, you have REITs running, you have anything related to, to the housing market, home builders. One of my top five stocks, MTH, is, is running today, it was six, seven, eight percent. IIPR is up five percent. Uh, Zillow, Redfin are rallying, and and then um, you know, yields are, are dropping. So it seems like if you look at small cap names, uh, I guess people were thinking it's gonna be easier to raise cash so they be they become more attractive. I, I'm, I'm just trying to you know rationalize or put a spin on it that makes more sense. Uh, but you know, if I if I thought the the S and P would be down nearly a percent and small caps would rally three and a half percent, I'd I'd find that pretty remarkable. But take a look. Uh, let's see. Yes. So the small caps. I'm trying to see what the April highs. I guess we hit two two ten forty four. Let me see if I can pull back. I mean, to me, it's a good sign. I've been saying it for over and over again about small caps rallying and uh, being the the next leg of this 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 market move. So. Even if we have some chop here uh, in in markets, I'm saying this morning, and small caps rally, I think that that's a good thing. Especially some of the names I'm in are are more this more small cap in nature. Um, well, the headlines right now, right? The today, if the market uh, closes just a little bit further down, well, at least the the magnificent seven, Apple, Google, Tesla, they're all getting destroyed today. I wouldn't say destroyed, but supposedly this will be uh, could be the biggest erasure of market cap. Uh, for seven names in, in history. Let's see if I can find where that where I see the headlines. Oh, Magnificent Seven's worst day since 2022 by this metric. So pretty much right now it's $535 billion have been wiped out in market cap today, just in those those names, the largest since a $557 billion wipeout in September of last year. Uh, at some point we have to have some kind of profit taking. That's why sometimes I like to see slow and steady. So I like to see the markets open flat. I hate to see gaps. Um, cause then sometimes you have these, these moves and they're not, uh, they're not fun. So hopefully markets find some footing here into the close. We don't have a crazy sell-off tomorrow. There's no, uh, surprise with the PPI earnings come in somewhat in line and the market can find some footing here and we can end the week on a good note. If not, th then I might start looking for a hedge put or two, especially t I'm not going to look probably unless something crazy happens here near the end of the day, the last half hour or so up, I'll, I'll just sit on my hands, but possibly, uh, tomorrow if, uh, we do get a little weakness. There could be some follow through on some of the chip names and they're up so much already. So it's not like, uh, you know, that they're, they're down 25% for the year and it's just padding to the losses. At some point, people are going to come take profits and then reposition. So we'll see how all that plays out. Some of the names. And also, if you take a look, here's the longer dated chart on, on the IWM. So uh, maybe there's definitely some room uh, if we start to run out with the, if the small caps continue their rally tomorrow. All right, so some of the other names, you know, quickly about Baidu, I finally locked the last of my July strikes. And then uh, it was given back some of the gains. It hit all the way up to 104 th this morning after the open, gave them all back. I didn't want to lose any more profits on the August strikes. 
So I locked some of those in. Uh, maybe some churn here today, tomorrow. It's it's above the it's 50 day moving average, 98.74. So I just want to see if that holds today and tomorrow. If it does, I'll look for some later strikes on Baidu, but just a monster uh so far. So happy to take those profits. Uh turns, right? Turn pharmaceuticals. So this morning, I guess Pfizer is redoing their they had a GLP-1 drug that they pulled the plug on back at the end of last year. And it, all of a sudden it's coming back from the dead. They announced this morning that they're going to go ahead with a once daily version of it, uh, once daily oral version, version, which kind of doesn't make sense to me, but I guess when the market's, you know, it's a huge opportunity, they're going to try anything they can to get, to get something to the market. Uh, the thing is their, their study, they pulled back at the end of last year, they pulled because of adverse effects. There was some crazy stuff that went on with it. Um, so supposedly, I don't know if it's going to be lower, lower dosage and just more frequently. I, I don't know the whole reading, but turns, I don't know if that's some of the reason why turn is running today. Um, but good, good for me. 916, it, it, it tested. I locked the last of my July 750s. My $10 Julys were coming back to life. I don't want to be in a situation where there's some M&A. So I've been saying this for a while. So I went and got some August strikes. And then I'll continue to look for opportunities to trade turn trade turns. The thing with turns, they have they're going to have their oral data out sometime within. It could be any day now, but the back half of this year, you would assume if they had more, if they were more confident in the third quarter, they would have said third quarter. So maybe they'll give an update. But for now, that data can come out anytime, and there could be some M and A. So I don't want to be in a situation where, uh, you know, there's an M and A, and I'm I have no calls. So or there's data out similar to VKTX. So see if it can hold here 850 or so i think that bode well and then some continuation um you know tomorrow and, and so on and so forth so that's turns a uh, vktx i think it's up 10 percent this week uh i posted a, a little snippet and yesterday the short interest came out it was updated uh there's over a billion dollars of shares sold short in vktx back when it had this higher short interest back in november it was only 187 million dollars in short interest so so this is a, a tremendous amount uh increase in, the, in folks who have a vested interest in the stock going down which is pretty remarkable uh yeah the stock's up 15 percent this week that's 60 handle i think once that breaks i keep saying it but uh then i there we get some uh some follow-through some momo i, I just again with same similar with turns that i don't want to be in a situation where there's some MA in the glp1 space over a weekend and the stocks really start to take off so still holding some some july 75s if well, I'll wait till next week before looking to add some more strikes. That's kind of my my game plan that I've been following on VKTX. Testing, testing. I'm still here, right? Yep. <laughs> I hear a buzzing noise. Oh, so just on, on the flip side. So but Broadcom typically or Lamb Research would be names I would get hedge puts on. I, I mean, I've been saying since Lamb was 1,400 and 1,200 and 1,000. I, I, it's not that I don't believe in these stories. They just offer great opportunities, especially during at the end of the week when these are names. You know, it drops 3%. The stock's down almost 60 bucks. So if you can get some far out of the money speculative puts, they uh, they pay, right? So uh, that would those would be two names that I'm looking at. And I mean, just take a look at, if you take a look at a chart too, I mean, it's not that I'm... Uh, you know, bearish, but you, at some point people have to come in and take some profits, you would think. So those will be definitely the names I'm looking at. Uh, while, while the mark was ramping this morning, I, I missed my chance to lock in my, the rest of my wing puts, uh, it, it goes all the, by the time I took a peek, it, it wing was already near 390. So I didn't want to be, uh, you know, I, I wanted to have some kind of a hedge or at least a position to play for downside. So I, so I held the, the last couple of my, my puts. There's still premiums are still strong in in the puts. They're still up nearly uh, three three hundred fifty percent. Uh, you know, I, I've talked about this about the casual dining sector. I think they still offer a great uh, you know potential for for more downside here. Probably to three sixty five on wing, uh, and not only that, it went all the way up to three ninety and just couldn't hold those gains. And that that's despite the market uh, you know doing pretty well, especially in the morning. I think it opened yeah it opened at three seventy seven. So I'll continue to hold the last of those into tomorrow pending any crazy uh, bounce on that i was looking at um uh, ai calls so all those small cabinet the names i was talking about uh, like um you know what do i call that um uh, like a ticking time bomb ready to go off with uh, celsius holdings and uh square and both those names rocked it out of the gate this morning 
square all i think it hit 67 in the uh early in the morning 67 and change and celsius all the way back up to 59.50 and then these reversed course just disappointing i almost i was talking about doing AI, ai calls because of the golden cross adding to my my july strikes similar situation all the way up i think it hit 31 and then reverse course as well so i'll probably just sit on my hands for now on those names but uh tim's i believe was bringing it up nice little uh thing in there uh the uh, unity right i mean here's a company trades three times revenues two billion dollars in revenues uh, they had some some issues with their uh communication with with their customers i think that was some of the issue uh, there's a lot of competition i'm that, i'm just shocked that it's that's trading down here especially with uh with apple and partnerships and things like that so at some point maybe i'll look for for some calls there in unity as opposed to adding more square or uh, celsius calls um yeah there's square see a 50-day moving average six, 66 65 it finally breaks that 50-day moving average square and then just gives it back it just it's been a frustrating name over the, the last couple of days to to trade so that's square celsius that's ai um baidu's still holding hundreds so hopefully that holds and then I'll I'll look for for more August strikes. Roku, Roku was all the way in the 63s this morning, and at about 9:45 of 63.50, reverse course three bucks. One of those, uh, it's back to its frustrating trading as well, where it just doesn't hold its gains. Um, at some point, I'll look for more strikes on that. And then yeah, take a look at the VIX now. It's only up two percent. So uh, I, I think if there's positives or glimmers of hope that this could just be a little you know, rebalancing folks, I guess, expecting at least half percent now is kind of like baked in. Maybe we go up to three, three quarters of percent rate cuts before the end of the year. Uh, and maybe that's some of the reason why we have this huge divergence between the small cap stocks and, and mega cap names. But again, the other side is we're at all time highs. So at some point we have to have profit taking. I think that's about it, folks. Uh, I'll try and get back on. Well, I'll be on audio tomorrow. Let's have a great rest of the day. Uh, rock and roll.